Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I am Johnny B. But together we are... Modeling for Advantage. So, mate, we've got ourselves a little green box. A little green box. A little green box. Uh, look, look at the little green box. Reinforcements. I know a lot of the Warlord resin stuff used to come in here. Not Warlord resin, just resin from Warlord. Because Warlord resin is a different thing now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is something that's out of production at the moment. Stalingrad Ratten Creek Fire Fight. They gave us a couple of copies to look at because it was really interested in it. So what this is, is an, a version of the game of single figure units. Sweet! For playing as really small scale. I'm very interested in this because I think that this is this is something that war gamers would be very interested in. You know that kind of five five model armies that allows you to play a game with a very oh, small amount of painting and modeling. Yeah, for sure. Get it right and in of course, there. I I think this originally retailed at 20 quid. As I said, at the time I reviewed, you can't actually buy this. It was sort of trialed a little bit pre-COVID, and then it just struggled to get everything together. But there's a, there's a decent amount of stuff in here, for what it is, including Stalingrad Rankrieg Rules a Booklet. So, Firefight. We've got in here, now this or some version of this is available as a PDF. Definitely. On their website, yeah. Firefight. Um, but it, essentially, you, you buy single, mo you, buy, you build an army in the way that you build an army in bolt action, except you buy them single figures. There is the kind of, um, you have to take a lieutenant and an infantry section. Yes. And so you're gonna have 200 there. points. Right. Optional selections. Yeah. So it's a really, really a small. Tiny. Mate, you can have a mortar team. You can have a mortar team, a flamethrower team, an anti tank team. Yeah, absolutely. And then when you go towards the back, there's actually an army list in there. A bit like you got on the back of the original rules. So it tells you what you're going to get. Uh, so you're. Um, your regular lieutenant and his attendant is going to cost you 60 points, just like before, and then your squad. But your squad sizes are much, much smaller. It gets even better if you go right to the back. Does it? Optional extras. Right to the back. Names, option. mate. Roll 3d6. Oh! Soviet names. Yarik Stanislav Nikusha. Man, That's epic. Insignia. Um, yeah, for the shoulder boards, epaulets, medals and decorations, details. backgrounds. You could be formerly was a teacher, civil servant, or criminal. Yeah, I, I love all this. Oh, this is awesome. The decorations, you even get bonus stats, and they're not yep. game breaking. It's plus one morale, gain the tough fighters role. Mate, this Sorry, is... Sorry, I jumped ahead a bit there, no, but no, no, I no. mean, that got Wait, me what, a bit fizzy. Not, this video is not proposing to review Firefight. I think what we're going to do, though, is we're going to play this. It. Yeah, for sure. Not, not in this video, but we are going to play this. Um, so let's have a look at what came in this kit. See, one of the things about bolt action is over the sort of past um, five years is the kind of starter sets have crept up a little bit in price. Yes. And there's an entry point, the, the starter sets. Now, I think they're 85 quid. Which is a lot more than 50. I think if you're totally unfamiliar with the game, but that's quite systems that do commitment. 20, 25 quid and 50 quid start, there's a lot more appealing. I just want to look at it. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like on a very small scale. Whereas this, at a price point of 20, 25 quid, you're in the game. Sweet. Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. in the game. So let's have a look at all the bits that you get with it, shall we? All the bits. First things first. Got a wee baggy, John. A and baggy? A wee baggy contains one, two, three, four, five, six Nazi dice and one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, well, they're, they're olive green. I would have said that olive they were green from Americans. Gray. Yeah. Olive green and grey. But you've also got proprietary communist uh, hammer and sickle D6s for resolving your shoe in. 
And the same with the and Nazi two, ones with the, with the Balkan Cross on. Oh, three. Yeah. No, there is three. Three. So again, see, you know, they, this is the kind of area where a lot of game systems will skimp on the tokens and stuff. They won't give yeah. you the, the nice quality ones. But this is their top end product. There's also a couple of pill bases in there, presumably for the sprues. You also get absolutely um, nice to see this here is you get a set of the pin markers that they do. Um, often... Uh, you don't have to use these, but they definitely help. Yeah. We have loads of these. Because we play games on cameras, you can't do the twiddly thing. They do actually yes, have a dial on them with numbers on. You can use one of these per unit. One to twelve. Um, but you'd never see that in camera. So we just use multiples each, of yeah, these. Each one of so these. we've got a big mountain. Always handy to That's have good, some though. more. So those are the kind of things that you need to play the game, yeah, right? They're, they're, Which yeah, is great. Key things. And then the models. 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 Well, that's interesting, isn't it? What's that, John? Ah! Uh, because you get you get both sides. You get both sides exactly. So this is this is intended to be like a ball action Literally, starter yeah. set, uh, as it were, a much lower price point. Clearly, there's not going to be fifty figures and a tank in here, right? No. At this price. <laughs> there are two half squads from which you can play a game, but we've got what looks like the German late war sprue. What's this? Says uh, no German Blitzkrieg infantry. Blitzkrieg so it is, infantry. it is Stalingrad era. Um, so you've got them in the early tunic uh, with the pouches, which is quite interesting because obviously one of the things about Stalingrad is the lack of winter equipment for the Germans. It's all freezing and not. <laughs> yeah, because they're in a cotton tunic uh, or a wool tunic rather than in a puffer jacket. Mm. Whereas the Soviets, you've got the Soviet. Uh, summer sprue, so you've got the mi the mix of the padded jackets and the summer uniform. This isn't the winter. Yeah, not the, the, the winter ones have got great coats. Uh, does it say on there? Still do. But yeah, yeah. So this will do you for either the earlier period of the Stalingrad <clears> campaign <throat> or even to some extent into the later fighting in the city, January with the snow and all that. Mm. Okay. You also get a Soviet weapons sprue. That's handy. An unexpected inclusion, to be honest. Because uh, you don't get that many of these. Now, this is fantastic. Because the way that the Soviets work, we'll look at them, uh, the individual sprues in a bit more detail in a moment. Mm. But they are the two separate arms, and then you put the weapon in. So you need the weapon sprue. There are some weapons on the Soviet kit. Oh, no, there are not. No, it's nothing. Ah, yeah, there's none on there, so I'm you absolutely there is, can't play without this. I'm guessing there is now, though, because they've had quite a few updates and, and bits and bobs. I hadn't even realised that the Blitzkrieg Germans, because they were one of the first kits out, mm. proper old school, along with the British, mm. I didn't realise that they've got an updated sprue. So that's kind of cool and new to me. It's, it says 2013, but that's a lot newer than... I recall the original Blitzkrieg Germans. Do you reckon? Yeah, for sure. Okay. They've definitely, they had an upgrade. So that's good. But it's still old, man. Mm. Well, you're a young man if you think 2013 is old. I think if it's this century, it's new. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> to me. Yeah, yeah true. Um, yeah, so on the, on the Soviet weapons room, and this is going to really give you, in terms of kit building, uh, there's lots of variety. You've obviously got your... Um, you, I don't know how to say this. Is it Moisin Nagant, the Soviet rifle? Yep. But there's a scoped one on here to allow you to build a sniper. You've got some PPSHs of the two different types. I think the one... Oh. What is it? How does it work? One this of them is, is quite a bit later. So if you're playing Stalingrad, you want to avoid one of them. Now, it is going to tell you it, on, the, on the bit of paper uh, which is the later SMG. There's a PPSH 41, do, 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 and there's a PPSH with a sickle mag. Does that mm. not have a number? It just says sickle mag. Oh, no, so that's that's okay as well, I think. Both 1941 patterns. I thought there was a later one. But yeah, you've got the sickle mag, you've got some drum fed mags. Uh, you've also got a captured Panzerfaust on here, which is nice. That is nice. Um, but this isn't a 1942 sprue, you see. That's why it's got a captured Panzerfaust. Right. This this. This does you for the whole period, uh, the whole uh, Russian war. You've also got a PTRD anti-tank rifle, 
And you've got the DP light machine gun on here, I think, somewhere. Yeah, just down there with the snipers. Just down there with the snipers, yeah, with this really iconic drum-fed yeah, magazine. Epic. There's Soviets. You do have enough bases. You might look at this and think, oh, no, I've got 12 guys, but only 10 bases. But there's actually two on the mm. Soviet sprue. Uh, so if we look at the Soviet sprue, because we've mentioned it. Yes. Uh, Soviet sprue. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys. Oh, yeah. I thought it was yeah. six. The, and so did I, no, yeah. So you've got three, yeah. um, uh, three, three here and uh, another five there. The um, prone guy, I think it's this one. The guy in his belly is really interesting because he's got a choice of two legs, I seem to remember. Yes. Yes. Choice of two legs. So he's got one, one stretched out and one kind of <laughs> hooked in a little bit. <laughs> Um, it's interesting because it allows you, they've done this with a few of their prone kits. It just allows you, if you've got two prone figures on the same base, they look a tiny bit different. Yes. You're giving yeah. them a different head, a different pair of arms, and a different right leg. It's not one is the right, one is the left. It's just the right leg. It provides you a little bit of customization there. Now, you definitely, having built these, you want to be checking the numbers on these as you're building them because they're not strictly in pairs as they appear they mostly are but not entirely so get the right yeah. set of arms when you do it and some of them have got padded sleeving and some of them haven't which matters for the different guy that you're building it you see some of them got the quilted jackets oh yes yeah 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 so you need to use the right pair of arms quite a few options though so yeah that's they, good they, they definitely both. are and the when it, when you come to the arm sets, the SMG ones are again different. The hands are much closer together than the rifle ones. It does tell you all that on the sheet, but if you clip all of these out and then try and put them together, you'll have a bit of a job on that. You will regret that. You that definitely, <laughs> definitely. Backpacks and stowage, nice mixture of those. You got the iconic sort of sack. Yeah, what's that all about, man? I, I think it's just about the cheap, mate. It's just just as a job. A bunch of cloth. You yes. Yeah? S yeah, yeah. Stick your stuff in. Just you shove your stuff in there. One of them's got a cooking pot on the outside yeah. of it. Or a, or a bowl or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> For which is nice. just like... It really is just a sack. It, yeah. You've got a Molotov arm. Nice. Over oh, yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven heads across the top. But a cheeky two heads down here. Oh. You've got, you've got guys, furry hat men. Furry hat, man. Men in furry hats are pros, mate. That's how you know. Yeah. So, nice variety. Um, I uh, I have built this kit. My um, I built some plastic Russians, but they're in they're in summer uniforms. How did you find it? I, I found it all right. I made the mistake of clipping all the arms out. Oh, <laughs> with so the first, speak the first from experience. View. <laughs> yeah, speak from bitter experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it's difficult enough when you've got so many moving parts if you're using plastic glue. Yeah. And then if you discover that one of them is the wrong part. Slightly off, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll look like it'll fit. Um, but you've got a uh, you've got a guy with a with a peaked cap on there, so he'll do you for an officer oh, yeah. or for a commissar um, in the various ones. But this is the same Russian summer infantry sprue as you will have seen elsewhere. Yep. With that, really nice. Shall we have a look at the German one then, John? Yes, please. So Blitzkrieg German, I've not built these. Have you built these? I, I built the first One, iteration two, three, of Blitzkrieg four, five, German. Six. And that's why I know that these are definitely different. And there were, there were no prone guys back then. And they were definitely Blitzkrieg. They yes, just... and their, their arms were like proper weedy. In fact, they're the same vintage as my British's. Right, so, okay. Yeah, one of the first kits. So most of these then. Oh, in like a bit it. of a departure, the heads are on the bottom of the sprue. Not at the top. Oh. The head's always got at the top, What does right? that mean? <laughs> <laughs> but then they'd be upside down. Now, clearly, they go at the bottom. So on here, you've got a few of the weapons uh, to make your six guys. Do we have in... Oh, now a lot of them, they've got the weapons molded in with the arms. It's amazing. It's that the newer. The difference a year can make, right? Yeah, yeah. So massively prefer that. So some of these, you get them with both arms on the weapon. Some people don't like that because that really limits the pose. Yeah. I, can, I, I, I can like it as a game of the speed of yeah. delivery. Yeah. If I've got six bodies that I can put that pair of arms onto and still have a slightly different model, you know? Um, yeah, so those, you've got one carry in it, which is nice. Is cool. Um, one, another one over here with a, with a bit more kind of across the chest. 
six different poses. There's no repeat posing there, is there? No. They're all slightly uh, different. Yeah. They're all very slightly different, which is Which is nice. good. Um, you've got pistol with a, a hand with a pistol, a Luger, in fact, of course, MP40. But the bit that really stands out to me on this is actually uh, not the heads, although you've got a nice ma mixture of forage caps, uh, Stahlhelms, uh, and one Some potential officer figure with a peak dude. cap. You've got the same thing with the prone guys, you've got spare legs to do them differently. But it's the, it, it's the, um, it's the equipment. Yeah, the the the, the um, entrenching tools and bread bag and so forth. One of the things I've seen in a lot of the later Warlord kits when they've gone back to this is instead of repeating the same piece, giving you six copies of it of an entrenching tool to glue mm. on, is they've molded these things together differently, and I really like that because that's that's intensely personal, right? That'd be an authorized way of doing it. Yeah, but soldiers move around when based on their the own field. body shape. Yeah, they're going to yeah they're going to put their gas mask and so forth. In the places that they go, I'm still I'm still amazed that like even in 1945, Germany is making aluminium gas mask containers. Nobody's used gas in the six years of the war. It's not it's not a thing, but they're still producing these. You never know. You never know. You never know. It might happen. I think most of the guys actually. I don't know whether they gave them gas masks, but it just became a bit of a storage. Another, oh, extra storage. Component. Yeah, it's another. It's another place you can put something. Keep put it your dry. beans in it or something. Or yeah, your coffee. yeah. What coffee in well, the in the Wehrmacht? Mate. Yeah, man. Your acorn-based chicory or whatever yeah, it was that they were on. Yeah. Ersatz coffee. Hmm. You've also got on here. I don't know if you've seen the guy with a potato masher grenades. Yeah, throwing but is, that. Is he in the pose? Is he in the airfix pose? He's not in quite in the airfix pose, but he's he's not bad. He's not bad. So uh yeah, this is again a nice kit. Now there's nothing remarkable here um in terms of this set, but as a place to start ball action, John. That's what this is about, right? Literally. Six six, six or seven, you know, maybe slightly more for the Russians. So they've got it. One figure is one unit. You've got six, not enough dice here for six of them. I think that that's an interesting way of starting the game. Um, I think that this, as a potential product for the future, more importantly, maybe a 30, 40 pound version of this with a little bit of scenery as well. Yeah. And another, a, another sprue or a couple of metal figures. Th this, I think, is a much, a much better starter set for uh, somebody who doesn't know anything about it. Or just younger people. Yeah, value proposition. I'm going to take this kit to school, uh, where I have a war games clip, club, a uh, clip, a war games clip, and I'm uh, I'm going to use it to teach the youngsters how to play ball action. Nice. Because shooting Nazis and shooting Soviets is legit. Yep. Yeah. Fair you game. can do that. You're Fair game to do for that. all. Absolutely. Sweet. What are your thoughts, John? Um, I I agree with you about having uh, a better entry point to this historical you know war gaming 20 quid mate and only a dozen and figures slightly to paint. yeah a dozen figures to paint and uh, you know i've not looked at the rules yet but i'm i'm kind of hoping it's an abbreviated so, uh, version of it might not be i don't know to be fair this is not a copy of the rules no this is very this much is a campaign but you need you would need ball action rules okay yeah you can't you this does not yeah, teach you how to play ball action this tells you how to adapt ball action into this into this style of game yeah, right exactly okay. well there's a there's a fun fact for you there you, you know go. you would still need a rule book or at least know how to play okay. all right guys yeah man i hope to see more of this so if you like bolt action and you're looking to start the system or start a new army on our website modelingforadvantage.co.uk we have a range of the starter sets as well as a few of the starter armies. Do consider buying from us as a way of supporting the channel. Thank you for watching. This is ground control to Major Tom. You I have no light on me. Yeah.
Oh no! You need light jump. My you cool. need the power of electric. Switch on the light. Set its power of light. Yes! They're now fully illuminated. It's really bright. You were right with that. <laughs> 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 it's shine. It's shine. 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 Yeah. <laughs> we gonna be okay? Are you gonna be okay? Well, I worry that when this is a full size, the image I'm just all white on this side. Because <laughs> it's unshaded light. Can I, I'll turn it, I'll turn Can it. Can you turn it? I'll bit? turn it. I'll, let's turn it around. That's fine. Uh, uh, red light. I've got a red light. you got a bezel cam on. I've got a bezel cam and some blue tack on my shoe. Blue tack on your shoe? Yeah. It's a bit random. 134 in. Do you want to restart? <laughs> yeah, let's restart the thing. 